Today, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make brick films. Now, before we begin, you might be wondering, what exactly is a brick film? A brick film is a film made using Lego bricks or other similar plastic construction toys. They are usually created using stop motion animation or other forms of animation. Now, stop motion is what I'm going to be focusing on, but what exactly is stop motion? If you don't already know, stop motion is an animated filmmaking technique in which objects are physically manipulated in small increments between individually photographed frames so that they will appear to exhibit independent motion or change when the series of frames is played back. I'll be showing you and telling you guys how to get a good script down and what to use for animating, set building, and editing. So let's get into it. Alright, so when making a brick film, you're going to need the proper equipment, and no, you don't need one of those $1,000 professional cameras they use in the film industry. You can use anything from a DSLR camera to an iPhone or an iPad. Now, if you do have a DSLR camera, you have a few softwares to choose from, but I'd recommend Dragon Frame 4, which is a software I've been using for a little bit now. It's expensive, but it's really powerful and gets the job done, and it's also used in the film industry, like Leica Studios... That's really all I know. Now, with an iPhone or an iPad, there's an app that I have mentioned a few times before called Stop Motion Studio. It's pretty basic and easy for beginners, but has good and useful tools. Now, when animating, you're going to need something that can keep your camera steady. Whether it's a DSLR camera or an iPhone, it's going to shake somewhat either way. What you can use to keep your camera steady is called a tripod. For DSLRs, there's a good amount of tripods you can find on Amazon in the $25 area. Pretty cheap, and they're actually pretty good either way. You can also find the same thing for iPhone tripods too, that also go into the same area of money. So they're pretty cheap and not expensive. Now, lighting, lighting, lighting. Lighting is probably the best thing you can give quality to your brick film. Because first of all, you can see stuff better. I got, I got two desk lamps right here. As any brick filmer, you should have at least two or three desk lamps, and they should follow the three key lighting rule. If you only have two lights, you can hold a white piece of paper up to bounce the light around. You can also tape blank pieces of paper to your lamps to make the lighting less harsh, to kind of dim it down a little, like I've done on this one. You can also tape different colored papers to your lights to give a different tone to your film. So before you can animate, you should know how to animate, and know some basic principles to animation. I'll link some helpful animation tutorials in the description below. Before you can continue, you also need to get a script down, otherwise you're gonna wing it and it's gonna be a mess, or you're not gonna wing it and it's still gonna be a mess. Trust me, I did this all the time as a 8 year old child. To write a script, you need to get an idea flowing in your head, and when you have that idea down, you want to write it onto paper, or type it on your computer, and then you're going to morph that idea into a bigger idea, and then eventually morph it into script with characters and dialogue. Speaking of dialogue, if you have dialogue, which I highly recommend you do because it can give characters to the story, you should record beforehand so you can animate along to it. Now if you're on PC and you're recording, you can download the free app called Audacity, which I'm actually using right now to record myself. And the mic I use is called a Blue Yeti Blackout, and I actually have a pop filter that I'm not using right now. But you don't need this uh, stuff that costs for $100 or so. I actually don't know how much stuff costs. Any mic should work, no matter how basic or advanced you are. Just make sure that your recording quality is good enough. FPS, frames per second. This is how many frames are going to appear in a second to give more smoothness to your animations. And just saying, the higher the frame rate does not mean smoother. There have been some pretty smooth animations that have only been done at like 12 frames per second. There's a pretty good video that I highly recommend you guys watch that talks about it, but I'm not going to get into depth on that. So I'd say if you're a beginner, you should start at 8 FPS. If you're more advanced at making brick films, I'd suggest you do 15 frames per second. Once you got all that done, you're going to need to get a set built. And you can build sets with literally anything. I've used stuff like this to make buildings in my background, I think. You don't need to like build a bunch of Lego sets to get a set. See, I have a bunch of, bunch of these separate pieces to put on your plates, which are under my desk and I don't have the energy to take out right now because I'm going to cause a mess. All you need is a bit of creativity and you don't need a lot of Legos and you'll make a pretty good set. So now, once you have all that done, including your set belt, you're going to import your audio onto Dragaframe, hook up your camera, set it onto your tripod. 
need to show you my camera actually. I use the DSLR EOS 4000D. It is a pretty good camera. The focusing isn't that good. It can't like focus on like multiple things at once. So you're gonna have to like play around with this. And I use, what are these things called again? Micro lenses. These really help you focus on small details in your brick films. And they're actually pretty powerful. They just help you focus on small things. I use it all the time. And this is a tripod I got off of Amazon. Pretty nice. I should have mentioned this earlier. <laughs> okay. Back up you go. So once you have all that done now, you can start animating. Like I said, I will link some videos in the description that give you some nice basic tips on animation, including some from a bunch of brick filmers on this community. So we've gone through the pre-production stage and the production stage. So once you've gone through all those, you're gonna head into the stage called post-production. When you finish animating, you can download your animation and set it to an editing software. On your PC, there's Final Cut, Wondershare Filmora, and Premiere Pro. I use Wondershare Filmora 11, I've heard Premiere Pro is also pretty powerful, but you need to pay a monthly subscription for it. I only had to pay once for Wondershare from Laura to get rid of the watermark and get a few more things on it. It's only like $50 to pay for it. If you're on an iPhone, iMovie or CapCut are pretty good apps to use. I've used both of them a few times, and they're not that bad. Mobile editing softwares aren't that good in hindsight. So in all these apps and softwares, you should be able to add audio and sound effects and text to your video. You can also do some color grading to give a tone to your video. Once you're done with all that, you have the entire video done. You can download the video as an mp4 file onto your phone or PC. Then after that, you can share it with family or post it on YouTube. That, that's the whole point of my YouTube channel. I, I post videos. You can also post it on your socials such as Instagram, Facebook, and more. Hopefully all of you guys found this tutorial really helpful. And see you in the next one when I decide to make another brick film. Goodbye.